Welcome to Cook 30. I'm Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes and also wrote the Revive Cafe cookbooks. And today I'm going to share with you how you can make a cafe style meal in just 30 minutes. Cook 30 food is all about using healthy ingredients and fast. We're going to use whole grains, plant based protein, tie it all together with great herbs and spices and use lots of fresh fruit and vegetables. On the menu today we have a gourmet dal combo. We have taka dal with chickpeas on lemon, herb, rice. We have a seedy sprinkle and a fresh cucumber and dill salad. And to finish it off, delicious Cambodian banana fritters. Now if you want to cook meals quickly, you need to be prepared before you start. We've got a clear work surface here, good chopping board, sharp knife, We've got our pots on the stove. The water is boiled, ready for the rice. And um, we've got ingredients in the fridge and on the bench ready to go. Makes life a lot easier. So let's crack on with the thing that's gonna take the longest, and that is cooking the brown rice. So quick lesson in cooking brown rice. First we'll just turn the pot on to get it um, up to temperature. So we're gonna use a standard um, recipe for rice, which works every time. And it's best to use long grain rice. It, um, it ends up being a lot softer and quicker cooking. So we're going to start with one cup of rice. This is a, more than a cup, so I won't use quite all the cup. And we're going to use two cups of boiling water, or nearly boiling water. And uh, so this recipe works really well. One cup of rice to two, two cups of water. And two rules, which you may have heard from me before, about cooking rice. Number one, do not stir the rice. The rice will develop little steam holes that actually cook it, so you don't want to stir it and disturb those or the rice won't cook evenly and properly. And the second rule is lid on. We, um, we want the moisture and the water to go into the rice to make it soft, not evaporate off the top. So just once it's boiling, turn it down to like a very light bubbling kind of um, heat and let it go in about 25 minutes to 30 minutes, it will be ready. Okay, next job is we want to get the dal underway. So we'll start this pan going, and we're going to start with a good dal base, which is your standard onions, garlic, and ginger. So just get an onion, and uh, just chop it up as finely as you can. You don't need to be too fussy or chefy about it. And uh, try and economize on your cuts. Is the fastest way I like to cut them. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of oil and uh, we're not deep frying here so it's just a splash under a probably about a teaspoon to maybe two teaspoonfuls so no big glugs or deep frying of the oil. And uh, next ingredient is a bit of garlic. And, um, Garlic and ginger are something that just go really well in most dishes. And you don't usually actually taste a garlicky or gingery flavour, but just adds this, this lovely body of flavour that brings out other flavours. And um, it just makes it, everything taste really lovely. So the quickest way is just to put the garlic in the garlic press, skin on and all, and then squeeze it through like that. We'll just uh, do that. And uh, we've got some ginger, ginger puree, two tablespoons of this. This is available at most supermarkets. One, two, um, which is a great little product. You could chop your own ginger up if you wanted to, but I think this is excellent. However, never ever buy garlic processed in these kind of containers. I don't know what they put in it, but it's not garlic. So um, make sure you always use garlic fresh, but ginger is okay to use in these kind of tubes. Okay, we'll stir that around. I'll turn that down. And we just want the um, onions and the garlic and ginger just to mingle around and become soft and let their kind of flavours come out of them. Smells so good. Second job done. Now we're going to just do the, um, the salad. We've got a cucumber salad. And I'm going to make this in a, in a dish, in a bowl. And we're just going to start with your average telegraph cucumber or whatever they call them in your country. Chop off the ends. And we're just going to um, just get rid of some of these onions. It's not good to share ingredients between dishes. Just slice it long ways. Oh, 
like that. And then we can then slice it long ways that way. This is just a good fast way of getting diced um, cucumber. We want it reasonably small, but not obsessively so. Just like that. And we're just gonna just cut through here. With the knife, make sure you're rolling it, rocking it back and forward. And it makes nice diced cucumber in no time. So that's the main ingredient. Now one of my favorite herbs is dill. Now I found it at the supermarket, you can't always get it, but when you can, it's just, it's just beautiful. If you can't find dill, you could use, um, probably use mint or even cilantro, but dill is just a really nice, nice herb to use. So we'll just pick that out. So about that much. There's a few little black bits here, pick those out. And we're just gonna just chop it up finely and put it in there. Make sure you leave a little bit um, in the container for later that we'll use as a garnish at the end. So don't use all of your dill up at once. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. And some lemon juice is going to work really well with this. Just give this the onions a bit of a stir so they don't burn. As you can see the rice is bubbling away nicely. Lemon juice. If in doubt, add lemon juice. It's just such a universal ingredient. I'm just going to pour it through my fingers to try and catch all the pips. Oh, a few naughty ones jumped in there. Where are they? Come on. Come on. You don't belong in this salad. You are not invited. There we go, got them. Don't want lemon pips in there. And to tie it all together, we've got some yogurt. So I've just got some um, some coconut yogurt. You can get soy yogurts, coconut yogurts. So good dairy-free yogurt that we're going to stir through. Choose whatever yogurt's your favourite one. Try to get one that's not too sweet. Um, but this will just add a nice bit of creaminess to it. So probably around about half a cup. And we're going to stir it around. And we're going to let this sit for the rest of the, you know, for the next half hour or so. Well, probably 20 minutes left now. And it will kind of soak up all that lemon juice and that dill flavour. And that'll be really, really flavoursome when we come to eat. So it's just a nice little salad to go on the side um, that'll just really go well with this, this dal. And it kind of, with you know Middle Eastern food, they generally have a lot of hot things like a dal. Our dal won't be hot, but next to it you have something kind of cool just to kind of balance, balance it off, I suppose. So we'll leave that to the side and come back near the end and, and plate it up when it's all nicely um, kind of soaked through. Now there's three spices that go together really, really well. And that is cumin, coriander, and turmeric. And they're a great base for any kind of um, Middle Eastern or Indian um, thing like this, like a dal. So we're gonna put two teaspoons of each into this dal. So two teaspoons of coriander, two teaspoons of turmeric. Turmeric gives a lovely color as well. And two teaspoons of cumin. Now we just need to kind of activate these so that the flavors come out. So we're just going to stir them around with this, the onion mix. It's now nice and soft, just for about you know, 10 or 20 seconds, just to, you can start to smell all of the lovely flavours um, come out of them, which is just lovely. Um, so then we're going to make the actual base of the dal, and we're going to be using a, um, a, a, a yellow dal, not to be confused with split peas. So we're going to use one cup of these. So I'll just measure these out. One cup. Now you can use red lentils as well, um, or virtually any lentil, but red or yellow lentils are the best, but I'm using a yellow lentil today. They kind of have quite a nice creamy, creamy um, consistency when they're cooked. And so one, one cup of the lentils to three and a half cups of water. So this is just nearly boiling from before. So I'll just measure this out. You may need to adjust your water as you're cooking. Every lentil seems to be different, but using this as a starting point, um, to get you going. If there's too much water, just cook it for a little bit longer and the water will keep escaping. If there's not enough, just add some um, at a later time. So this will just um, mingle around and after about probably 20 minutes or so, um, these, these lentils will become really soft. Now we don't want to add salt at this stage. Um, if we do add salt, 
Um, it, it inhibits the lentil's ability to um, to um, you know to cook and become soft. So we add the salt right at the end. So leave that going. So you want it just so it's just bubbling. It's just starting to come up to bubble now, and that should um, should help that. Okay, now we're going to start with the dessert, and we've got some of these Cambodian fritters. And while I was in Cambodia um, about two years ago, I was in the, in the market, and this, this guy was selling these yummy banana fritters. And I tried one, they were really, really delicious. So I thought we'd make them a little bit healthier, but the same kind of process applies, made from chickpea flour and bananas and a few other ingredients to hold them together. And they're really, really easy. So I'll show you how they work now. So I've just got this pan here on, so we're just warming the pan up slightly. So when we get ready to cook them, the pan is um, hot and ready to go. We don't have to spend five minutes waiting for a pan to, to warm up. So first ingredient is, believe it or not, um, chickpea flour. So also called garbanzo bean flour. It's a really nice flour to use and I use it for any kind of fritters. And it sticks together without needing eggs, which is fantastic. So we're going to be using uh, one cup. So I better, better measure this, better get a cup measure. Normally I don't measure things, but with this kind of a baking thing, it actually pays to. So we'll start with one cup of the chickpea flour. And we're going to use, we need about one cup of water, but you'll kind of want to start about with about half a cup and get it stirring. If you throw all the water in at once, it can become um, really, really lumpy and hard to kind of get to work together. So you kind of want to stir it into a paste, get rid of all the, all the, um, the kind of the floury bits. And then you can, um, like that, and then add the rest of the other half cup of water and stir it around like that. And eventually it will become a nice, consistent, even paste. There we go. So we better add some bananas. So I'm just going to use the chopping board for this. So I get three bananas, the riper the better. And we're just going to mash these up um, to put in. We don't want them completely mashed, but just enough so they stick together as a, as a fritter. So I'll just grab a fork. Where's my fork? Here we go. Just going to mash them, so just like that, nothing too special, just show you end up with mashy bits. I'm going to put that in there with the chickpea flour, there's lots of sweetness in here and um, lots of banana flavour obviously. And just to give it a little bit of crunch, we're going to add some, some slivered almonds. And then you just give a lovely little kind of extra, you know, when you bite into something, there's a bit of crunchiness there. It's just really nice. So it just makes this dish a little bit special. I can't remember if the ones I had in Cambodia had these, but I just added them in and they make a really nice mix. And as you can see, the banana is actually a good binding ingredient as well. This makes a really nice fritter kind of mix. So stir it up well. And another thing to make a little bit special is a bit of lemon zest. This just adds another interesting dynamic. So wherever you can, you want to be just constantly adding, I'm right-handed, so I better use it right. But you, can't, you want to be using as many interesting flavoursome ingredients as you can. So we'll just zest some of this. And you don't need much to, um, to make it zesty. And what you're actually getting out of the lemon from the skin is the lemon oil. So you can actually add lemon oil and it will probably do a very similar job. So here we go, just scoop that in. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Not enough to make it savoury, but it just kind of brings out the flavours a little bit. And these are now ready to go in the pan. Have I missed anything? Don't think so. Oh, a little bit of honey. We'll just put a little bit of honey, so probably a tablespoon, just to help the banana on a bit. You might need a bit more if your bananas aren't all that um, all that sweet. 
I've got a hot pan here. So what I'm looking for is basically when I put a, my hand in a pan, you, put, you want to put your hand about that far above the surface, and you should, it should feel pretty warm. So that's kind of a good way of kind of determining whether your pan's hot enough. So I might turn it up just a little bit. So we're going to start with a little bit of oil. Now we're not deep frying, we're just putting like just a touch in. A lot of people when they think frying, they think basically make it a, an inch thick deep worth of oil. It's not like this, it's just a little touch, just to help it not stick and give it a little bit of flavour. And all we do is just put them in here like this. And we'll start with doing four. I'll just turn this up a little bit. And they should start to sizzle. So you kind of want to do sm smaller batches. You don't want to fit too many into a pan and make them overcrowded. So often we'll just do four per pan. There you go. I'll take a couple of minutes per side. Look at that. Well, those, those are going. I'll tell you a bit of a story about my um, first day of opening my cafe. 2004, I remember getting up. It was uh, February 14, which was Valentine's Day. Although I was so engrossed with um, doing my cafe, I didn't even know it was Valentine's Day. Um, sorry to my wife. Um, but basically, I walked down the street, 7 o'clock. It was a, 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 um, a dark morning. I opened um, my cafe for business. And I remember sitting at the counter, full of anticipation. I'd just spent three months renovating, getting menus, hiring staff, um, and, and creating this cafe. And finally, after many delays, this was the opening day of my new venture. And I thought, wow, this is, the, this is the most exciting moment of my life, starting the cafe. So I thought, OK, let's see how it goes. So I opened up, 7 o'clock, opened the doors, stood behind the counter with grinning and looking forward to this new experience was about to begin. And uh, so anyway, a few minutes later, someone trotted up the stairs, walked in and said, hi, I'd like a coffee, please. And um, I'd actually decided to do a healthy cafe, so I didn't sell coffee. So I said, sorry, I don't have any coffee. So the person walked out of the cafe, never to be seen again. Second customer comes along, bounds up the stairs, and uh, said, oh, I'd like a, a latte, thanks. And I said, oh, sorry, we don't do coffees. And by now I'd had time to think of a sales pitch. So I said, look, we've got some healthy, delicious smoothies instead. Um, would you like to try one of those? And um, the person, clearly needing a caffeine fix, said, no, no, um, they'd like to have um, coffee instead. So they left, never to return. Third person bounds up the stairs, and said, hi there, I'd like a, um, a short black, thanks. And I said to them, oh, look, sorry, um, I don't have any coffee. Um, and I was about to launch into my spiel about the smoothie. And they said, what? Are you some kind of religious nut or something? And turned around in anger and stormed out of the cafe, never to be seen again. And that was my first three customers and my new big adventure of um, owning, a, owning a cafe. And I, I thought, oh, no, this is terrible. But fortunately, it was better than that. It improved. We um, got some menu items on. Lunch times became a big thing for us. And before long, we got to the stage. Actually, I remember the first day I was serving over lunch. And um, we were serving, I was serving a customer, turned around, and a queue had appeared all the way down the cafe, down the stairs, and out the front of the restaurant down the street, queuing for this healthy, vegetarian, plant-based food. And a kind of a shiver went down my spine thinking, wow, this is just really cool. This new adventure has begun and people actually like this kind of food. So it was very, very exciting. Anyway, back to the fritters. Let's see how these guys are going. Let's have a look under here. Oh, yep, look at this. They're ready to turn. Look at that. Who says you need eggs to do fritters? There we go. These are looking good. So a couple of minutes each side. We'll come back to those shortly. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to the dal. Um, it's just, you kind of want the dal to be totally having water over it most of the time it's cooking. So I'll just add a little bit more just to make sure it's underwater. That's great, and we'll come back to and do some more um, fritters later. If you've just joined us on Cook 30, we are making a gourmet dal combo. We have a taka dal with chickpeas on lemon herb rice with a seedy sprinkle. We have a fresh cucumber and dill salad. And to finish it off, a Cambodian banana fritters. Mm-mm. It's going on really well. So we want to do the seed mix now, which is just a nice addition to go over the dal. Just got a hot pan here. I'm just going to throw in a few nuts and seeds. Not very complicated at all. You probably want to burn about a cup in total. So probably around about a quarter of a cup of... Um, so we've got cashew nuts, we've got some pumpkin seeds, 
sunflower seeds, whatever your favourite nuts are, just sprinkle them in. Uh, fennel seeds give an amazing, um, just a really nice, interesting taste, so I'll put not so many of those in. And some sesame seeds. So we're just going to dry um, fry these just to just to unlock some of the, the flavours. And we've just got to really make sure they don't burn. So we've got quite a reasonably hot pan. I'll just turn that up a bit. And um, these will just take about a couple of minutes and they'll just get nice and um, fragrant and um, just a nice little addition to have for the dal. So speaking of the dal, I think this is ready to go. I'll just taste a little bit. Some All dals are different. You just want to just, nice and soft, which is ready to go. So we want to add the chickpeas. So just uh, banzo bees or, or chickpeas are the same thing. We're just going to open a can of these. You can... Um, cook your own and freeze them if you want um, but it's really convenient just to have a can and they're really inexpensive these days um, and we're going to put some coconut milk in you could make your own cashew milk or um, other other style of kind of cream but coconut milks are kind of a nice authentic kind of Indian Middle Eastern style ingredient so you want about probably half a can and um, we want to add some salt so probably about half a teaspoon of salt and a bit of honey for sweetness, about a tablespoon, and stir it around, and that's pretty much the dal is ready to go. We'll turn it off. You don't want to keep cooking after you've put the cream in because it can kind of split, so we'll just turn the, the gas off. And this may take, a, if you in a few more minutes, this will kind of just kind of thicken up and be really, really delicious. Look at that, all those flavours. It's a very simple dal, but it's just nice and flavoursome and very warming, especially in the winter and we'll kind of top it off with coriander. Um, let's see how these guys are going. Just a little bit more, I think. Um, we've got a bit of greenery to go in here, so we're gonna add some frozen peas. Um, and this just kind of adds a, a, just a nice bit of color as well. So we'll um, put those in there and just stir these around. Now these are just frozen, we're not gonna cook them at first, just the heat of this will cook it. They just need to be lightly defrosted. If you overcook peas, they start going a horrible kind of brownie colour. So that's pretty much ready to go. So let's get into the rice. I think this is um, ready to go now. Got a nice rustic wooden bowl. So we're just going to spoon in some of this rice into here. And um, as you can see, you can see the little vents in there. So just kind of rough it up and um, We'll tip it into the bowl. So normally you might just serve it with rice like this, which is perfectly acceptable, but it's much more fun. Oh, there's a bit stuck on the bottom. We don't need much there anyway. To, to add a few other ingredients, so we're going to be adding some, oh, lemon of course. We've got, because it's lemony rice, we're going to just going to zest some lemon in. So just any kind of a small grater setting does this. You don't need much at all. like that. And the, the most important part is all these lovely um, herbs. So we're going to go with some, again, we're going to go with some um, some mint as an essential part of this. So I've got some mint. Um, so we're just going to finally chop up some mint. Not the freshest stuff, but it'll be fine as long as it's not dark or brown. So we've got some mint. And then we've got some um, parsley, just some Italian parsley just to chop up as well. So just as lovely, these lovely fresh herbs make a massive difference to the rice. And we'll add some um, cilantro as well. We're gonna use the stalks this time from a previous, this was used from a previous recipe. Even these little stalky bits um, that come off the end of the cilantro are really nice as well. So I'll put that in, mix it around. Just a touch of salt, just a touch of, of olive oil, and um, just mix that up and that's a lovely base for the dough. So with the fritters, I'll do another batch of fritters in the break, and we'll come back and plate up at the table shortly. So I've added some honey and some sliced almonds over the top of these Cambodian banana fritters. They just look amazing. Can't wait to try them. And to eat the dough, it's just simple. So we start with a bit of rice. This lovely herb rice, just with all those flavors in there. You know that's gonna taste good. 
and the dal with the chickpeas. And I've also put a bit of cilantro and sweet chilli sauce and a little bit of leftover coconut milk just to garnish it and make it look a bit pretty as well. So make sure you focus on the garnishes. And we're going to top it off with this lovely seed mix and nut mix. This just adds another dimension. And of course, something cool to go with it as well, this, this wonderful cucumber and dill flavours just go really, really well. So I hope you've learned something today. I hope you've enjoyed those foods. Make sure you go healthy. Um, you'll feel so much better with these whole foods. Thank you for joining me today on Cook 30, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mmm.